What's going on YouTube? Uh, gonna do a little update slash review slash kind of uh, install of a uh, set of wheel spacers I got for the truck. Uh, it's the first video on the new phone. It's uh, when well, I'm trading the iPhone, got a Samsung, the new S9. So we're gonna see how this does. Uh, let's get right into it. Okay. The truck uh, I'm working on, obviously my own truck, is a 2013 F-150. It's the XLT uh, crew cab. It has a 6-inch lift. Um, and the wheels and tires we got today set a 20 by 10 uh, XF off-road wheels. I believe the offset is a negative 44, uh, but the tires is a 35 by 12 and a half by or 20. It's a Kumo. Um, the wheel spacers I just ordered literally <clears throat> two days ago uh, off eBay. Uh, they are hub centric, which I was going to go with the Boras. Um, and then I wasn't even sure if I wanted to do wheel spacers or what size. These ones were a lot cheaper. They wound up being, I think, $65, $67 shipped uh, literally two days ago from California, shipped right here to my door in Tampa, Florida, uh, literally two days. I'm very impressed with the uh the quality of them uh here they are here again very very clean flip that over for you you can see there it's got the six by 135 bolt pattern um i believe they're powder coated black um or anodized now they look powder coated anyways they are hub centric which is a, a big deal i think i just mentioned i was looking at getting the bora wheel spacers these are in fact one and a half inch wheel spacers I was debating between these or going with a two inch wheel spacer. Um, and so far, I still haven't made my mind up. Um, I already did the uh, driver side ones. Um, obviously, the car is up in the air, but I have the one and a half inches on. Uh, definitely sticks the wheel out pretty good. I do have the fender flares, so you, if you kind of imagine it without the fender flares, definitely pokes the tires out a little bit. But, uh, one thing, I was watching a few videos myself on YouTube, uh, when you do anything below two inches, people were saying they, uh, sorry about that, I'm all sitting on a wheelie chair, uh, they were saying they may have to trim the studs on the car, um, this obviously may be different for certain F-150s, but mine is a 2013 XLT, it is a two-wheel drive, but when you slide the, uh, spacer on, these studs will not need trimming. When you go flush with it, uh, the tips of the studs, they do seat right at the lip of the actual wheel spacer. And I've obviously done the driver's side, so I know that they sit flush. Um, for those of you who have OEM wheels with the actual pocket in the wheel, you wouldn't have to worry about that. And again, it's the same in the rear. I know some of these Ford trucks, the studs do poke past. But again, same thing in the rear of the wheels, uh, wheel studs are flush with the spacer so uh but anyways um one thing i will note i saw a couple of videos again people were saying to uh incorporate anti-seize on the uh studs i would not recommend that what i'm doing here is i'm dabbing a little bit of um uh, a red loctite onto it to kind of give it a little bit more bite um i know the common practice when you whenever you Put a new set of wheels on is to retorque after 100 150 miles um obviously to retorque your wheel spacers you would have to pull the wheel off and get into all that and uh kind of a pain in the ass so i'm gonna just put a little bit of loctite on there and kind of push it to the next oil change which is in i don't know about a thousand miles and uh hope for the best if the wheel comes off hmm, shit there you go you got another youtube video um so anyways that's kind of where i'm at right now i'll give an update tomorrow um when I got some daylight, I'll do a little bit better pictures and uh, do a little test drive. But obviously, that'll be in a few seconds for you guys. One other thing I'll note before I go here. Another thing I did is I took a wire brush and cleaned the hat of the rotor um, to get any corrosion off of. I would probably highly recommend that to anyone to make sure this is nice and smooth. So your spacer sits on there flush. And again, hub-centric. It's It'll it'll slip slip on nice and snug onto the uh, the hat and the uh, actual hub 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 as well so i'll be back in a few seconds it'll be tomorrow and i'll uh, take it for a test drive and let you guys know what to think hopefully get some better pictures stay tuned 
All right, guys, well, we're back the following day. I just took it around the block and uh, got it up to about 60 miles an hour. Um, there's no vibrating or wobbling of the tires. Everything's riding very smooth. Uh, the only negative thing, it is rubbing. Um, I'm about to pull in my driveway here, and you will see the rubbing I'm talking about. I can get just about there. And then it starts rubbing. So it's mainly on, uh, I think I can turn my wheel about 75%. And then as soon as you get past that, we're going to get some, some rubbing. And uh, <clears throat> I actually haven't seen what it looks like. I'm getting out of the truck right now. And we'll take a look. Uh, the front bumper is vinyl wrapped. And you can see there, on the, it's the front bumpers here. So it is rubbing on the, uh, the notch right there. And then on the other side as well. Yep, you can see where the uh, the vinyl has just been tore off just in that short amount of time. Let's see if I can get a close up. So, other than that, I did intend on trimming the front bumper or possibly getting a new one. But I guess it's kind of the thing that happens when you widen them. So. Again, I'll be giving an update. I'm probably going to get the uh, pre-runner bumper, the Raptor look like, but that's what she looks like. Definitely a lot wider and sticking out. So, I guess let me know what you think, comment, and we will uh, catch back with you in the next project.